Okay, Bruce, we're just back from our fishing trip yep. up in North Jersey. And we're up in Bruce's fish room, and it is, uh, what, March 5th, I guess, isn't it? I think so. Yep, okay. So you're about to tell me we're in your upper fish room. Right. What's new in the tanks here? There's a dwarf rainbow fish in that tank. I believe there's five of them in there. And the head and tail I picked are new. Wow, look at the plant growth. That CO2 treatment that you're using on this tank is really doing a job. And so we almost have to take your word for it that the fish are in there. I can see yeah. some cardinals, some tetras, and twitting the discus look beautiful as they always do. And so let me see. I'm not using the tripod, so it's gonna be a little bit of bouncing around here. Sorry about that. And so what Look at those discus. Don't they look beautiful? Yeah. Let me see if I zoom in, if I can get a decent picture of them for you. Are those from Disc Madness? Every one of them, yep. Yep. I like the electric blue, the, the best of all of them. Okay. That color. He's the smallest one in there. Well, that and your Amazon sword plant is taking over that tank, much like mine are, but look at the baby Amazon swords coming off that. I know. And, and yours... I used to cut that off really early, Yeah. But I kind of look, like the look of it, the way it, it uh, spreads out, and so it's, you know, it's it's plants that are, look like they're in mid-water, but they're still attached to the mother plant. And they're developing quite a root system so that when you're ready oh, yeah. to plant them... Yeah. And you've got about four big ones there, and, and then there's another... I cut them off from the mother plant. Yeah. I cut about uh, one-third to one-half of the roots that are on the ones that are from the mother plant. Because they don't, they don't need to have all that root. New roots will develop. Okay. And, and after you plant them, new roots will develop more quickly if you cut the roots that are already on there. Okay. Now the tank just to your left. Right. Anything new there you want to tell our viewers? Um, nothing new in that type thing. Nice school of those... Um, Romanellas? No, the, the triangular shaped ones. Oh, uh, Rasbora. Rasbora, yep. And again... Yeah, they're, they're one of the few fish that are, that are small and are not intimidated by discus. Okay. And you have some discus in this tank, but they're not showing right now. No. There was only one left in that tank. All right. And he died a little while back. Oh, so that's so why we don't see any discus in there. It's showing up much better at this point. And look I don't at know the. Why he died? And is but that just you're one? Always going to have some attrition. Along yep. The way. I now, mean, and the other reason there was one left in here, there were two for quite a while, two blue ones, but the one that's in in the other tank over here, the fifty-five gallon. Mm -hmm. That one was the aggressor, and he was keeping the other one over here from eating the. Huh. So I took him out and put him in with the bigger ones, and he holds his own against them. <laughs> but this guy by himself, although I figured he'd be fine by himself, he just, you know, eventually he just died. Every one of those fish has its own personality, doesn't it? They do. Yep. All right, what's going on over here these days? Well, now, the story on the 29 gallon, for example. Right. Uh, I went to feed him, I think it was even just yesterday. And I said, damn, here's a dead fish at the top. Well, you figure, okay. The rosy barbs are one of the new ones. Right. Long fin rosy barbs. Mm -hmm. And also the long fin serpe tetras. At any rate, I decided, you know, this tank is really overcrowded. Okay, I got the one dead fish, but maybe there's something else going on. And damned if it wasn't so. I, I pulled out about six dead fish. Wow. And most of them were rosy barbs. Huh. Which, of course, spawned in the tank downstairs that we talked about. Well, let's talk before. a little bit about that in a minute. Well, uh, you know, mostly when you lose fish, it's a problem you have created. Particularly when it's a few fish. And I realized I'm getting kind of lazy with that tank. And uh, so I, I tore it down. Completely. I took all the plants out of there. I was going to say, it looks like it's been cleaned up. Yeah. And I even, uh, I used a vacuum cleaner on the gravel. Right. So I got a lot of the uh, algae out of there and the uh, waste material. 
So the, the gravel base is pretty clean right now. Not totally. Now let me just ask you a question. How did you vacuum? That's a very fine gravel, and I've always been concerned by going with that fine of gravel as opposed to like the coarser gravel, the vacuum would suck up the sand too. Do you have that problem or no? Uh, yes. But what it does is it agitates the uh, gravel. Okay. And it removes the debris from it. All right. The big problem is, because that's a, such a well-established tank, when I pulled the plants out of there, uh, some of the roots stayed in the gravel. Uh-huh. And that clogs up the uh, gravel cleaner. Okay. So to take the gravel cleaner apart several times, mm -hmm. and eventually I just gave up on <laughs> using it. So I just, I took most of the gravel out with a cup. Okay. And then rinsed it in the, uh, you know. Oh, all right. Now that makes in, sense. In the tub. So I could yep. get most of the debris out of it. Now your shrimp tank. Yeah. Got a lot of shrimp in here. Oh, yeah. This is all well, shrimp that have bred here? Well, i get more shrimp. But the problem is, this is a very popular shrimp. Now are these and shrimp they, that have been born here? Most of them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of them in there. And uh, most shrimp will crossbreed. Really? And these... Uh, red shrimp? Uh, no, they call them cherry shrimp. Okay. But it is red, I mean, whatever you want. But cherry is the official name for them. Uh-huh. Official, but it's not a scientific name. Yeah. At any rate, I read about them, and I found there's only... Well, I, I only discovered the one type that they call... Uh, a bee shrimp that it can't crossbreed with these cherries because if you put any other shrimp in there, they will crossbreed and eventually you're going to have the cherries anyway. Okay. Now I'm going to cut it short because this battery is not going to hold up. Okay. So let's go down to the lower fish room All right. that we visited before. All right, Bruce, we're downstairs now, and we're looking yep. at all the tanks, but let's start with this one right in the center. Looks mm -hmm. like a bunch of new fish that I haven't seen here before. What That's do you got? True. And where are Here's they from? A, uh, please, California. I forget the name of it offhand. But at any rate, they're red eye, red swordtails. Beautiful. Usually they have black eyes. Okay, beautiful color on them. Yeah. And. Uh, the ones with, that are sort of multicolored, blue and red, mm -hmm. that's the uh, dwarf grommies. Okay. And I love your black mollies. They look like sailfin oh, black mollies. Oh, yeah, they certainly are. And they got a nice, the males do have a nice sail on them. Oh, I think I saw some babies in here. They've had babies, Bruce? They did. I was saying earlier... Bruce gave me a call at, yeah. earlier this week yeah. when he had some babies. And it's kind of funny when you think of us having been in this hobby as long as we have, yeah. uh, him having run a business for a number of decades, yeah. to be so excited about a couple of babies being born in these tanks, to call the other guy. And my reaction was how wonderful that was. And look at that Molly, the tall, fin, beautiful. Yeah. And I wish Ray was still around because that's what Ray and I used to do. And boy, if the three of us would ever have gotten together like this. Oh, yeah, uh, I think we would have had a ball. As, as kids, Ray and I were both visitors to Bruce's store and good friends. But uh, as adults, we didn't have any contact until after uh, Ray passed away. And That's so... True. Okay, as a teenager, I had bred these dwarf karamis. And they must have had two or three hundred young. And... Uh, it was very interesting to just watch this swarm of uh, reddish blue baby fish just swimming from side to side in the tank. It was uh, kind of exciting. And how many of them did you get to grow up into anything that lasted? Well, eventually... Uh, Not all 300, I about, No, no, no. A lot of, trish, a lot of attrition along the way. And uh, so I wound up with about 25 grow-ups. Wow, that's pretty darn great. Yeah. And that's when you were a teenager before you had your tropical store. Before I ever started in business, yep. That's amazing. Thanks yep. for sharing, Bruce. Yep. I'm going to move to the right here, Bruce. Okay. And so we're looking at, again, another 10-gallon tank. This that's one right. with, I see two black angels. There's two, I see? More, two more in there besides those two. Okay. And they're well, hiding in the back. These two are uh, intimidators, and they've already laid eggs once. Really? Yeah. Okay. But uh, as as expected, oftentimes the first batch they lay, mm -hmm. they're kind of 
um, unsure what to do, which, you know, you would think everything would, it would just be nature would take over and they'd, they'd almost instinctively know what to do. But at any rate, a uh, few of the eggs started to uh, 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 decay. Right. And usually what they do is they just eat those eggs and then they continue to fan the others and then they'll hatch out. But uh, oftentimes they get upset and they just destroy all the eggs and eat them. And that's what happened. You know, it looks like these two in they front are keeping the, the other two. That, uh, look at the beautiful finish on that. On that tube for the filter. Ah, the really? Eggs. Yeah. Okay. And I'd say, based on what I saw, there were probably anywhere between maybe 50 and 70 eggs. Wow. So for a first spawning with immature angelfish, that's that's pretty good size. I love yourself in black Maui. I haven't seen one with that yellow tinge on the yeah, dorsal on fin the dorsal. in a long while. That's not yellow, that's gold. That's gold, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming down I to... I only get the top of the line fish. <laughs> not yellow, gold. So listen, you haven't bought fish online before, have you? No, this I have not. And so what would you say to your experience this time around, uh, where you're starting to go beyond our I'm local stores? I'm more confidence in them, particularly this outfit. But those bass that are over there, that was the first fish that I bought. Right, I remember that. that. From a place in Arizona. There's still two of them left out of the six that I ordered. One arrived dead, which I got credit for. Okay. And uh, three others just succumbed because all they'll eat is live food. I've tried frozen food of all different kinds. But you've been growing those microworms, for example. They yeah, seem to have been I eating know, those. I, know. I, I do that, and they still get some of the feed off the plants where uh, bacteria growth will occur. But uh, these two that are left, I think, are, are fairly strong, but I think they're two males also, so I'm okay. not getting any production. Now, down in the one of the 29s here, right. we see a school of black neons. Yep. Some serpe in front of that school. I don't know if we're going to catch them on the video much or not. And you, again, you, one of those remember, Amazon swords. You remember that uh, when we stopped at uh, see, Absolutely Fish? Yeah. And I pointed out the turtle that was in our own tank? Yeah. And his color and the yep. gravel? Yeah. And how they complemented each mm -hmm. other? Well, you see, most everything in that tank with the black neons is either black or white. Except now, for the blue betta. Would be the uh, the betta. Beautiful blue. But most everything else is either black or white, mm -hmm. or black and white. I see, okay. And with a black background as I see it, either that or I'm looking through yeah, the black, black wall. black background, yes. All right, coming down to the end of the room tank. Right. I see... Uh, that some discus, the one discus, one beautiful. Discus, yeah, here's another one that was, for some reason, the blue discus seemed to be more aggressive. And, and I'm looking, uh, I'm looking at your betta here. The elephant ear betta yeah. is showing off, along with some. Uh, what am I looking at here? The four right in the five in the front. Uh, oh, oh, I know uh, what they are. Uh, not Cobensis. Not Cobensis. No. Uh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and the younger deers, we wouldn't have had yeah, that problem. No, we didn't know it right away. But uh, look at the size of that Amazon sword plant there and it's sending off babies. Yep. And again, you have a, one of the babies is almost a full adult, could be yeah. planted if you wanted to. Well, the next time I go to uh, a discus place, I'm going to bring them some of those uh, Amazons that are growing off the mother plant. Uh huh. And it's just going to be a gift because it's rams. They treat, yeah, rams. That's right. what those Ramsey. are. Yep. And these German rams, if I recall, we got them at the uh, Discus. So. Yeah, yeah, I got them at the uh, Discus place. I love them. I put them in the tank. They do well, and then I don't notice them for a while, and then I realize they're not there anymore. Yeah, well, I had six of them originally. I'm now down to four. I think I counted five. Yeah, no, four. No, there's maybe, five. Maybe some of the water perimeters are not uh, as much to their liking as. They well, you got you got five of them in there, Bruce. So you only five. lost one. Oh, all right. I thought it was two. I love your betta. Beautiful colors in that betta. Yeah, it is. 
It's a nice multicolored gun. And the light behind is letting us see the fins very nicely. Yeah. And uh, we and both. He, he thinks he's peeking the hill in that tank. <laughs> and then he comes up to other fish and they just kind of wander away from him and like. Who do you think you, you think are? You are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I do see one of those bats. Yeah. Right there in the center. And that blue mark on the one side of them there. Uh huh. I don't know what that is. Huh. All right. I mean, when they came, when I first ordered them, when they came in, he had that, and it has never left. I'm going to switch down the other side of yeah, it so sure. I can get the other sure. tanks. And so, for those who are new to our video, we're talking seven 10 gallon tanks and two 29s in this room, especially built. Watch over here, feel okay. down below. You feel that metal piece on the bed? Okay. Sometimes you can get your uh, All right. uh, foot stuck in that, so just all be right. careful. With it. Now we're moving to the left of that first tank we were looking at with all those fish in it. Right. And what am I looking at here? Anything in this tank or are we empty? No, that's an empty. Empty tank. Plants well, are doing beautifully. It's waiting for uh, fish from from uh, California uh, again that uh, they didn't ship initially that I paid for. Okay. And I said they would ship them within the next two weeks. So hopefully next week. Rakovi, killifish, and feather fins. All right. And they didn't charge you for the split of the order. No. But then again, you had free shipping because you bought enough the first. Right. $149 part, okay. or more, and your shipping is free. And it got here safely, no problem at all. No problem. Didn't uh, lose well, it. you know, the one problem I did have was the uh, the delivery guy. He rang the doorbell. I think he rang the doorbell, put the box down, and headed back to his truck. Because by the time I got to the door, he was gone. And you're supposed to be able to sign for him so you get the guarantee, 14-day guarantee. So I called the company. I said, I opened the box. The fish are doing fine. But that's the experience I had with the delivery guy. Huh. I said, do I still get the guarantee? And she said, not a problem. Good. Good. That's what they should do. Now in this last tank, I see a couple guppies, a half black female, looks beautiful, yeah. and a bright uh, red or orange male. Yeah, which I got from that other place we went to, the first place we went to today, and couldn't find any of the good quality guppies like I had seen when I went there the first time. So Again, the, we wound up not buying anything at that place. The plants in this tank are doing so beautifully. Yeah. And, and, and that tank has salt in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the guy up there told me that, uh, I said, how much salt do you put in the tank? He said, a, a tablespoon every five gallons. As a general thing or just because of no, he said the because fish that you're... No, it's a live bearer and that's what he recommended right. to use with it. Well, and then you get the baby fish over there? Yes, I do. I don't know if we're going to see him on camera, but I'm oh, in I close. See. Okay. And so between, and the... The black molly babies are there against the black background. I don't know if we see them. What are the other babies? This was a surprise, uh, right? Yeah, right. Rosy barbs. Rosy barbs, which That's you had in one of the tanks down here, and they laid eggs. Yeah. Well, six of them were down here. Okay. And they were transferred to 29 gallon up top. But that's the one I had the trouble with, and it was mostly rosy barbs that died. And I think I lost one or two of the long fin serpes as well. Okay. Which I, I don't know if we're going to see the babies on there or not, but I went in nice and close and I think it stayed in focus. Yeah. So, just to give you that overall sense of the room again. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about what we did today, uh, we went on a fishing trip like Ray and I used to go on all the time. We went yeah. from uh, central New Jersey, I would call it. it. Bruce lives in Metuchen, which is around the Woodbridge Edison area. I come up from uh, Burlington, so I'm about 45 minutes south of that, and this time we went about an hour north up into, uh, across into Nyack, New York, yep. and we visited one particular fish store. They're kind of disappointed, but it was always fun going in any of these yeah. stores. And then we used the phone to see if we could find other tropical fish stores in the local area, and we found two others. The next one I would say was very nicely kept up price of things were much higher than we would normally oh, see. Yeah, but a uh, couple of young people well, got yeah. a good store and yeah. they bring back memories for you, Bruce, when you used to have your store? Yeah. And I think uh, the thing that I did discover today was some of the old time supplies that I used to use, apparently manufacturers aren't even making them anymore, such as 
brass uh, gang valves. Uh -huh. Because the brass valves, which were made in singles, doubles, all the way up to maybe six ga in a gang, you had a much finer control of the uh, aeration. And then the last place we went was Absolutely Fish. Right. We've been there before, and i got to say, of all the fish places we go to, that's my favorite. The prices are reasonable. Yeah. Large selection. Excellent staff know what they're doing. Yeah. And I must admit, I ventured out, and I'm going to have to go look up the name of that type of fish that I bought. And the first time we went there, I had been there only once before, and uh, because we discovered it late, and it was hard to get the entrance into it. I did the curb jump <laughs> to get in there in the parking lot with uh, horns blurring behind me. <laughs> and since then, Jimmy hasn't let me drive. <laughs> well, we uh, we have a good time, a yeah. lot of good memories, and a lot of, it, it's uh, a fun day. A, a lot of BS going on today. And so uh, we both we bought a betta. Are you going to put your betta in something that I can see, or yeah, not yet? Yeah, I'll probably well, not yet. Okay. I'll probably put them in those uh, two guppies. All right, we'll there. have to see it next time we're here then. Yeah. All right, Bruce, great day. Yep. And it's funny, we were just talking about coming in. We don't have to buy fish to be a great day. No. It's a good time being together, sharing memories from uh, when... I was young in Metuchen, and Bruce was a little bit older and had his fish store that we went to all the time. Yep. And so they're great memories of a nice little town in Metuchen. And it was just time spent together. We had a KFC lunch together. Yeah. We visited three fish stores, and mm. uh, we didn't get stuck in traffic, which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, so We did see some bad traffic yeah. going the other way each time, which was good. Thank goodness. Yeah. All right. Bruce, thank you for this trip. This has been another episode of Jim's Fish Room Update, Visiting with Bruce and in his fish room. And what's your assignment for tonight? To look up what is water. That's right. <laughs> so any of you out there are interested, you look up what, what is water also. It's a commencement speech for a college graduating class. Uh, very interesting. The title is misleading, but well worth seeing. All right. We'll see you there. And... Uh, Visit to you next time. Bye. Okay.